Welcome back, folks, to Let's Play The Raven, Legacy of a Master Thief. Where last we left off, Constable Zelna had talked to the various passengers on board the carriages, and now has to search for a missing purse. However, the author did say that the inspector had gone into this next carriage further along, that we shall go and examine. But before we do that, there's an interesting little thing that we can do in the, uh, place between the carriages, and it's this box. Hmm, a box with a padlock. I suppose it contains tools for the train's crew, maybe for coupling and uncoupling the cars. At any rate, it's positioned so that it's easier to reach from the ground than from up here. By the way, we can try and open the box. Levitating padlock! Locked. Bang, bang! Whoa! Uh -huh. Matt, have you gone mad? That was silly of him. I'll shoot. Hey, my pistol. You'll get it back in Venice. I could have fallen under the wheels. I thought you were a ghost. Ghosts don't exist. They do too. One just flew past the window. Yes, yes, sure. Now get moving. Oh, man. I'd actually forgotten that that actually happens. Uh, I remember that um, the box wasn't openable, but I didn't remember that. Also, you notice that as soon as he grabbed the pistol and put it to his pocket, it did disappear. You'll remember in the previous video that, the first video, that we encountered the professor who was, had a cup of tea. Note that he no longer has that cup of tea, and we do not have that cup of tea. I don't know what happened if he ate the entire cup of tea, like actual um, cup and plate and all, but who knows? We can't get into that without a key. And there is the freight car here, which we were told the inspector went in the direction of. But before we do that, we should probably do the right thing and inform Matty's mother of the fact that this has happened, that he basically nearly killed Zelna. Obviously, Matty is the raven. Oh, uh, Constable? Hello! Uh, yes, ma'am. My son didn't make any trouble for you, I hope. Yep. It's just that he just walked past us, silent and seething. That's usually a sign that someone's laid down the law. I'm afraid so. He played a trick on me, a rather dangerous one. The lad left me no choice but to take away his wooden pistol as a punishment. I understand. And thank you. Maddie is a very lively child. Sometimes he needs a strong fatherly hand. Where is Matt's father, if I may ask? He's... He's gone. Ah. ah. I understand. Could you, uh, leave Maddie's pistol here, perhaps? So you don't have to bother with it? Of course. I told him he wouldn't get it back until Venice. There you go. Very well. Thank you again, Constable. So we have learned that Maddie's father is... Gone. We're not entirely sure if that uh, means that he's not around or if he's dead, but he's not here. And so, we move on to where we were originally wanting to go to. The freight carriage. And hopefully nothing terrible will happen in here. Perhaps this is the end of the road for Zelda? I strongly suspect that the door is locked. No. It's open. It is indeed. Let's go in. Obvious Hello? trap is obvious. Wow. Don't move a muscle, you feathered fiend. Hello. Put the gun down, Robert. If I may introduce. Constable Robert Oliver from the Yard. Hello! And this is the revered Constable Zellner of the Swiss police, who obviously couldn't control his curiosity. Well, this is the uh, constable that was mentioned in that news article that the doctor gave us. So indeed, it was a trap. We were right. Then I was right. You really do want to lure someone into a trap. That's none of your business. Perhaps that someone recently struck in London. Yep. And how would I bait my trap then? With an eye? An eye on its way from Zurich to Cairo? 
<laughs> Someone has done his homework. Well done, Constable. Thank you. Constable Robert Oliver. Constable Robert Oliver. Is it possible that I read your name in the newspaper? Yep. Ah, could be, sir. Could very well be. Robert was there when the first Eye of the Sphinx was stolen. Ah. Why were you in the museum? Did you spot something from outside? Well, sir, I noticed that a door was ajar, which was suspicious. And it was my duty to investigate, sir. Scotland Yard gave him a commendation and assigned him to me as a liaison. A great honor, sir. Where do I get the feeling that Zelna and Robert will be butting heads at various points during this story? Nah, of course not. I hope you'll acknowledge that I, as a Swiss policeman, can undertake investigations in my own country. Are we still in Switzerland? I could be your eyes on the train, as long as you're here in the freight car. Oh, really? I could indeed. Let's talk about the, uh, the wallet. Baroness von Trebitz told me that she's missing her purse. Baroness von Trebitz? Interesting. Hmm. Indeed, sir. But it has nothing to do with our case. So, I shouldn't concern myself with the matter. Ah, uh, why not? It's your job as a policeman. But don't expect me to be particularly interested in a lost purse. Fair enough. We shall continue regardless. Now, you might be more interested in the information about the fact that Professor Lucien can't get into his compartment. There is a certain Professor Lucien on the train. He's an archaeologist from London. And what's his story? Well, it seems someone locked him out of his compartment. Locked him out? Well, yes. The door is locked, and he's standing outside without a key. Was it locked from inside? It may have been. Hmm. Do you think the locked door could be important? Professor Lucien plays an important role in this story. Well then, Constable Zellner, be my eyes and ears on the train, and see that Professor Lucien gets back into his compartment. Will do. Report back to me when you're through. My pleasure, monsieur. We should probably talk about the Raven's Heir, as this is obviously what this trap is all about. What do you know of this Raven's Heir? He tried to blow me up. Robert. Indeed. We don't know who we're dealing with yet. In any event, the new Raven is a more dangerous man than the old one. How do you know it's a man? It could just as easily be a woman. Or several men. And anyway, how do you know that it's a new Raven? Monsieur? Never mind. I go attend to the door now. Good. And Constable Zellner? Mm -hmm. Yes? Don't bother us unless you have something new to report. Of course. A thief might get anxious if there's too much activity in the freight car. Exactement. Knock twice. Then we'll know that it's you. Understood. And then you won't try and shoot me, Robert. So, we now have to make sure that Lucien gets back An into his compartment. An investigation on behalf of Legrand that takes me one step closer. If I can convince him of my competence, I might even be able to see this case through to the end. I'm not so sure about that, but yeah, we have to make sure that Lucien gets into his compartment now, even though we already were going to anyway. The ladder leads up to the roof. It will be suicidal to climb up there while the train is at full speed. The wind, tunnels... No, I'll stay down here. Let us go into the saloon car again. We need to get him into that room. And there is one way I can think of doing so. Finding a key. And if anyone's going to have a key, it's going to be behind the bar. Oh, and there's a bowl here. Mmm, butterscotch. I've loved them since I was a child. Their only drawback, they don't play nice with false teeth. Ah, let's take some mm. anyway. Maybe if I just suck it. Good plan. Have some butterscotch, Zelna. Clip through that chair, Zelna. Who'd have thought that one day butterscotch would remind me of my age and of all the things I had to leave behind? Oh, behind the bar, I think, now. Let's have a look. I suppose the steward won't object to me having a look around in his absence. I'm sure he won't. Let's look at the, uh, the notepad. The pad on which the steward writes orders. Empty. Maybe he didn't use it because there's not much to do today. 
Well, let's take all this. I don't need the pad, but the pencil might come in handy. Yeah, we'll have that pencil. Can we have the scissors? The steward probably uses the scissors on hard-to-open packages. These days, nearly everything is sealed up tight. A colleague recently told me about dry powdered soup and small bags. I couldn't believe it. Hmm. Well, we can't take that. Now, can we take ooh, the drawer? Perhaps he keeps the compartment keys in there. Let's try opening it, then. Locked. The lock is so cheap that I could easily pick it. If I want to impress Legrand, I should probably just do it. He's famous for his unconventional methods. Hmm. And you're capable of picking a lock, are you, Zelda? A steward's pencil. Probably one of the most traveled pencils in the world. Let's go, shall we? Now, if I know anything, is that there's one character on this train who will have something that will help me, uh... help me get into that drawer. And that will be Miss Miller. I think it's uncomfortable for her when I talk to her in front of Lady Westmacott. She seems to take it as an inappropriate distraction from her work. Although, she's just knitting. Taking up a craft like that is typical of women who were told as little girls that idleness is a sin. Let's talk to Miss Miller. I think it's... Although... Hmm. Okay. So we can't talk to Miss Miller right now. We can talk to uh, Wes McCart, but... Uh... There are thousands of things I would like to ask her, but nothing would justify neglecting my duties here on the train. Hmm. Okay. Fair enough. So we can't yet go and deal with, uh, with the actual, um, bar right now and getting into this drawer. I need a bit of wire or something like that to pick the lock. Maybe that's what I need to know. Perhaps now that I know that piece of information, I can ask Miss Miller. Don't clip through the stool again, Zelda. Well, you did very slightly, but that's okay. I think... Oh. No. So we can't talk to her right now. We could, however, talk to Matty. Matty apparently may be somebody who knows where the wallet's gone. Hello, you! Did you enjoy that entire cup and saucer with tea? Was it tasty? Perhaps we'll never know. By the way, you clipped into him there. You shouldn't do that, it's bad for your health. Ah, he probably doesn't like us that much right now. At all. Hello, Matt. Yeah. Oh, come on. Are you going to be angry with me for the rest of the trip? Until I get my pistol back. I gave it to your mother. Oh, man. Couldn't you have just raked me over the coals? Would you have learned anything from that? I didn't learn anything from this, either. Oh, dear. Perhaps... We shall give him something to make us like us more. Like butterscotch! Would you like a butterscotch? You think you can bribe me? I have no reason to. You made trouble and got punished for it. Take it as a peace offering. Just four? If I'm faster than you, there'll only be three. Aha. Hey! There you go. Have some butterscotch. Friends again? Yay! All right, then. And no dangerous nonsense anymore. Okay. Now, we could ask some questions. Like, where's the steward? And there he is, still knocking on the door in the background. Tell me, have you seen the steward anywhere? Mm, no. He was walking around a little while ago, though. Hopefully they didn't forget him in Zurich. <laughs> What's he supposed to do? I'm looking for a key to open a compartment door. Did you check his things behind the counter? I'm sure the drawers will be locked. Can't you break it open? Or pick the lock like the raven? Perhaps. But I'd need a piece of wire or something like that. Ask my mom. She has a lot of hairpins. She doesn't like the wind messing up her hair. Hmm. Thanks for the tip. There you go. You need to be told by Matty that you can get a hairpin from Miss Miller. Your mother is Lady Westmacott's companion, correct? Yeah, but it's not like you think. At first I thought, 
boy, you must be really wicked if you need to pay for friends. But the lady's really okay. A bit odd and really old. But other than that, she's great. She likes me. The lady has peculiar taste. Hey! <laughs> Where do you... What about your father? And how long has your mother worked for the lady? Two years. And your father? What does he do? He stayed home. I used to go fishing with him, and hunting. He even let me shoot a real gun. And then? Then Mom fought with him, and he left. Oh. I was seven. Well, where does he live? You and your mother, do you both live on Lady Westmacott's estate? I'm only there for the holidays. Most of the time I'm at boarding school. I imagine that's not very pleasant. No, it's fine. I have friends there. You always have to be so quiet in the lady's house, and I'm not allowed to bring any friends. Such a big house with so many places to hide and no one to play hide and seek with. You said it. Oh. Seems like he feels a bit neglected and ignored. How old are you, Matt? In eight months, I'll be nine years old. And do you already know what you want to be when you grow up? A burglar? <laughs> no. We'll see. Maybe an actor. Really? Well, I don't know. You need a lot of talent for that. I'm an actor in a theater group, you know? You are? Oh, yes. And I'm one of the best in our group, if I may say so. Humble, too. I get really deep into my roles, you know? I don't just talk like the character. I think like him. I become him. It's the only way to... <coughs> Matt, are you okay? <coughs> okay, he's choking on the butterscotch. I think you just have to be good at copying things to be an actor. That... That wasn't bad. Disturbing, but not bad. Oh, he's good at acting. And also, um, pay attention to what Zelna said there about getting deep into roles. It may become important later. Missing purse, though. The Baroness in the second compartment over there is missing her purse. Do you have any idea where it could be? <laughs> Do I ever? Hmm? That guy over there with the violin case? What about him? He picked up something in Zurich and put it in his violin case. Really? Oh. Yeah, and he made sure that nobody saw him. But you saw him. Uh-huh. Did you also see what it was? Nah, not really. But now that I think of it, it must have been the Baroness's purse. I should look into it, shouldn't I? I think so. So long. So longer. Aha! We have a lead. The violin case. We could probably ask him to search it, but he'll probably say no. Let's ask anyway. He'll probably say no. Excuse me, sir. Hello. A passenger is missing her purse. Perhaps it was stolen. Really? Someone saw you with your violin case on the platform in Zurich. What's the meaning of this? I didn't steal anything. Nobody said you did. I just wanted to ask you whether you might have noticed anything on the platform. Ah, well... Why did you think I was accusing you? Well, I thought uh, because you mentioned my violin case in the context of the purse. Apropos, may I have a look at your violin? It must be a very extraordinary piece. Oh, that's, uh, that's not possible. It's a genuine Guarneri. Very valuable. Very. And also very sensitive. What could harm it here? Light? Air? May I ask you to open the violin case? No, you may not. I'm not guilty of anything. I'm afraid I have to insist. Then I'm afraid you need a warrant. I will not stand back and let you rifle through my belongings. Thought he'd say no, but that was a guilty... good trip. Thank you. Thought he'd say no, but that was a guilty conscience as ever. He definitely has that purse, and we need to find a way to get in there to look. But that will be for next time. For when we come back, we'll have to get into that compartment, get that purse, and save the universe! I, I mean, find the raven! Whoever the raven is. Perhaps he's on this very train! I'll catch you then, folks. I'll see you then. Later.